اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آیت نمبر 57 سورہ التوبہ If they could find a place or refuge or a cave or any hiding place they would certainly run to it with an obstinate rush There are some among them who criticize you O Muhammad concerning the distribution of sadaqat Who is this referring to? They say that this is by the name of Harqas He was from Zul Khuwaisra He protested against the spoil distribution of Hunan while Nabi Sallallahu was distributing the spoils. He came up to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and said, Be fair, for you have not been fair. Nabi Sallallahu replied to him, He said, I would have become a loser and a failure if I was not fair. By he in whose hand is my life, I do not give or withhold anything. I am only a keeper. So when this man by the name of Harkas, when he left, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Beware of this man and his likes. There are similar persons in my Ummah who recite the Quran, but the Quran will not go beyond their throat. So this was referred to here, while concerning the distribution of Sadaqat, if they are given from it, they are pleased. And if they are not given from it, lo, they are full of rage. It would have been better for them if they had only been pleased with what Allah and His Rasul had given them and said, Allah is all sufficient to us. Soon Allah will give us of His bounty and so will His Rasul. That would have been better for them had they been pleased for what they had received. Indeed, to Allah do we return our hopes. Innama sadaqatu lil fukurra'i. In fact, the sadaqat. Now this ayat, ayat number 60 of Surah Tawbah, is going to give you the eight areas or the distinctions where zakat should be spent. The first it says, in fact, the zakat that is sadaqat collection is for the poor. Lil fuqara. Fuqara means someone who has a broken back, meaning that he doesn't even have enough to provide the necessities. And when we talk about necessities, it means food, clothing and shelter. That means he doesn't even have enough to provide these three basic necessities of course the others follow it but these are the first three basic things food clothing and shelter wal masakin the helpless and who is a maskin a maskin is such a person who may be having an income but he is not able to fulfill the necessities of his family for example if if he if he brings in food then he is not left with money to provide clothes to his children or for that matter, if he can provide clothes for his children, then if someone falls sick in the family, he does not have money to go and get them medication. Similarly, if he wants to uh, put his child for, for any school or studies, now if he brings in a little amount in the house with which he is able to, to provide them food, shelter and clothing, then he is not able to pay the fees of the school. Meaning, the little basic necessities that one needs to have a respectable living. M Miskeen comes under that, that he has an income, but and on the other hand, he's not going out and asking people. A faqir may be going out and asking people, but a miskin will not go and beg people. So he needs to be recognized by the con living conditions. So Allah says that one is faqir, then is miskin. Walamilina alayha, those employed to administer the funds. That means those people who have been employed in the department of zakat can be paid from the zakat as salaries. Well, mu'allafati qulubuhum, those whose hearts need to be won over to the truth. That means if you want to bring their hearts together and may, may that they get inclined towards Islam, then such people can be helped through zakat. Wafir rakab, then ransoming the captives. Wal ghamirin, and helping the destitute. Wafi sabilillah and in the way of Allah, وابن السبيل and for the travelers. So these are the eight points where zakat should be spent and we must be very clear that whenever we are giving it to a uh, for, to the fuqara or to the masakin, then we must verify that do they fall in that category or not. And when you are taking out zakat, try to give it in all different eight areas of zakat. 
try not to just focus on one area and neglect the other seven that is a duty allah says this is faridatum min allah that is far from allah wallahu alimun hakim and allah is all knowledgeable wise wa minhumul ladina yuzuna nabiyya wa yaquluna huwa uzun there are some people among them who abuse the prophet saying he is one who believes everything he hears say it is good for you that he listens to what is better for you he believes in allah has faith in the believers and is a blessing for those of you who are true believers as for those who abuse the rasul will have a painful punishment because you see this is also referring to the hypocrites because you see nabi sallallahu would listen to everybody's comments so for them they thought that he is very low on the ears he he starts to take everything that he listens so allah is saying that this is in a way better for you that he listens to everybody being a leader he listens to everybody that's a very good uh, sign of a leader they swear to you by allah in order to please you but it is more fitting that they should please allah and his rasul if they are true believers don't they know that anyone who opposes allah and his rasul shall live forever in the fire of hell that surely is the worst humiliation the hypocrites are afraid lest a surah should be sent down about them why because they knew they of the actions they knew that they were not doing good things they were they knew that they are cutting off the uh, roots from the back of the muslims by living amongst them revealing to the muslims what is in their hearts say mock if you will allah will surely bring to light all that you fear if you ask them what were you talking about they will promptly say we were only jesting and having fun they were just 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 saying for no reason it was just out of fun say what then were you mocking at allah his revelations and his rasul make no excuses now you have rejected faith after your belief even if we may pardon some of you who were not serious in participating we will punish others amongst you because they are criminals now as for the signs of hypocrisy i'll just say some of them to you so that it is a reminder for us that may allah save from such sign one is that they will always stop you from doing good and whenever it comes to help and assist or support in the way of deen then they will always refrain whatever they have heard about allah and his book they tend to forget it then of course disobedience and their similar likes are the people with similar likes are going to be together that means mostly on the evil side so allah says al munafiquna wal munafiqatu ba'duhum min ba'd ya'muruna bil munkari wa yanhauna 'anil ma'ruf so you'll have to note here also the hypocrite men and the hypocrite women they are all alike so the symptoms of hypocrisy you will find common in them they enjoin what is evil forbid what is just and withhold their hands from doing good they have forgotten allah so he has forgotten them in fact the hypocrites are transgressors so you have got the points as signs of hypocrisy here allah has promised the hypocrites men and the hypocrite women and the unbelievers the fire of hell to live therein forever a sufficient recompense allah has cursed them and they shall have a lasting punishment kallazina min qablikum kanu ashadda minkum quwwatan wa aksara amwalan wa aulada your behavior is just like those who have gone before you they were mightier than you in power and more flourishing in wealth and children they enjoyed their portion of this worldly life thus have you enjoyed your portion as did those before you and you have entered into vanities as they did consequently their deeds were fruitless in this world and in the hereafter wa ulaika humul khasirun and they are the ones who are the losers alam yatihim naba allazina min qablihim qaum nuh wa ad wa samud have they not heard the news of those who have gone before them the people of nu ad and samud and the people of ibrahim the men of madian that is the people of hazrat shuaib alaihi salam and the cities which were overthrown that is the people of hazrat lut alaihi salam their rasuls came to them with clear warnings but they did not listen allah did not wrong them but they wronged their own souls the true believers both men and women are protectors of one another they enjoin what is just and forbid what is evil they establish salah pay zakah and obey allah and his rasul it is they on whom allah will have his mercy surely allah is mighty and wise wa adallahu al mu'minina wal mu'minati jannatin tajri min tahtiha al anhar khalidina fiha wa masakin tayyibatan fi jannatin adn 
Allah has promised to the believers, both men and women, gardens beneath which rivers flow, to live therein forever and they will have beautiful mansions in these gardens of everlasting bliss. Best of all, they will have the good pleasure of Allah. Zalika huwa al-fawzul azim. Now that is the highest achievement. Ya yuhan nabiyu jahidul kuffara wal munafiqina wa ghluz alayhim. O Prophet, make jihad against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be firm against them. Now, this is after nine years of Medina that this firmness regarding the uh, kuffar and the hypocrites is coming. That they have been given enough chances and now you don't have to compromise with them. And it is the worst of all homes. Allah says, and be firm against them, hell shall be their home and it is the worst of all homes. They swear by Allah that they said nothing when in fact they uttered the words of unbelief and they committed kufr after accepting Islam. They meditated to kill, that is a plot which they were unable to carry out. They had no reason to be revengeful. This is referring to Abdullah bin Ubay. And uh, uh, this was coming back from Tabuk when he said that the Muslims are not going to come back alive except that Allah and his Rasul had enriched them through his bounty therefore if they repent it will indeed be better for them but if they turn back that is they don't repent Allah will punish them with the painful punishment in this life and in the hereafter and they shall have none on earth to protect or help them and we also see at this point when the Muslims were returning with Nabi Sallallahu after Ghazwai Tabuk and these hypocrites were laughing at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu why because Nabi Sallallahu's camel got lost on this uh, while they were coming back so they said that this is the man who claims that he receives revelations and Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam comes to him whereas he cannot even find his own camel so they used to make mockery of Nabi Sallallahu also there are some among them who made a covenant with Allah saying if he bestows on us his bounties so we will spend in charity and become truly of the righteous and we do know that the hypocrites are stingy when it comes to spending and at the same time when a hypocrite makes a promise he always breaks it but when he did bestow of his bounty they became stingy turned back from their covenant and became evasive he put hypocrisy into their hearts to last till the day wherein they shall meet him that means sometimes the bad amal throws one into hypocrisy and this is a curse by Allah that uh, one is turned towards hypocrisy May Allah save us from such deeds. But here Allah is referring that they came in a covenant that they are going to spend. And then when they were full, the covenant was fulfilled, when Allah bestowed them, then they started to revert back and they started to move back. And then they did not spend. So Allah said, then what as, as a punishment that Allah Ta'ala turned their hearts towards hypocrisy. As a consequence of their breach of covenant with Allah and the lies they told. That means this is again another sign coming out of hypocrisy that these people, they lie. Nothing, whatever they talk, they talk in, in very comfort zones and they think that lying is not a big deal. Whereas we know that this is Gunai Kabira and this is a sign of hypocrisy. And if today you talk about trade with people, they say, well, uh, lying is not a big thing because everybody lies in trade. You cannot work without lying. Nowhere in the Quran, nowhere in the Sunnah do we find that the Muslims had a pr are allowed to practice such a deed in their trade or other things. So how come one feels very comfortable by saying that it's okay if you lie? Are they not aware that indeed Allah knows their secret thoughts and their secret counsels and that Allah knows fully well all that is hidden? As for those that taunt the believers who give freely and ridicule those who find nothing to give except the fruits of their labor. This is again Ghazwai Tabuk and we see that Abdurrahman bin Nauf, he brought about 4,000 dirhams and these hypocrites, they said that he is showing off. And then we have this one Sahabi who went and he started uh, serving in the, um, in the crops of this uh, Jewish fellow and he worked all night. And in the morning, all he got as labor was handful of dates that he could buy. And all he did was that he brought them and he gave them to Nabi Sallallahu And Nabi Sallallahu took these handful of dates and he kept it on the heaps of piles of the uh, funds that had come or the things that had come as donation for Ghazwai Tabu by other Sahabas. For Nabi Sallallahu this was something which was so, so heavy in weightage. Why? Because that man worked all night and this is all he could make. And even that he was ready to come and share as a contribution on his part 
with the Muslims. So Allah say, refers that specially. Can you see the the honesty that uh, if somebody shows for Allah and how honourable is Allah? Uh, how much honour is Allah giving to that person that such a thing is mentioned in the Quran? And here we see Allah says that they ridicule those who find nothing to give except the fruits of their labour. Allah will throw back their ridicule on them and they shall have a painful punishment. So that means one should never ever uh, make a mockery out of good deeds of other people. Because we don't know if Allah doesn't like it, we don't know how is he going to, going to pay us back for that. So whether a little or a big deed, as long as it is done in the name of Allah, then at least the others should not make a mockery out of it. O oh, Prophet ﷺ, it is the same. Whether you ask forgiveness for them or not, even if you ask for their forgiveness 70 times, Allah is not going to forgive them. Because they have disbelieved in Allah and His Rasul. Allah does not guide those who are transgressors. Those who remain behind were delighted to sit inactive behind Allah's Rasul and they hated to make jihad with their goods and their persons in the cause of Allah. They said to each other, do not go forth in the heat. Say to them, the fire of hell is much more severe than this heat. If you think you're going to stay back and you've saved yourself from the heat, then just think about the hereafter then. If only they could understand. Let them laugh a little. Much will they weep as a recompense for what they have earned. From now on, if Allah brings you among them and any one of them ask your permission to go forth for jihad, say you shall never be allowed to go forth. Now when they will come next time, don't even take them with you. Because they have proved it over and over again that they don't first of all deserve to go with you. Secondly, Allah has taken away the tawfiq for them to enjoin this good cause of Allah. And thirdly, now they can prefer what they were preferring, preferring over jihad. That they wanted to stay back, okay, they can stay back. They wanted to be with their family, okay, stay back with your family. So Allah Ta'ala is clearly saying, say, you shall never be allowed to go forth with me, nor fight an enemy in my company. You choose to sit inactive on the first occasion, therefore you shall now stay with those who stay behind. You shall never offer funeral prayer for any of them who dies, nor shall you attend their burial, for they have denied Allah and His Rasul. This is also referring to Abdullah bin Ubayy that when he died, his son, he came to Prophet Muhammad if he could give his shirt so that they could use it as a, as a covering for his uh, father, as a shroud. But uh, Nabi Sallallahu was even ready probably to give it, but then this ayat was revealed that Nabi Sallallahu should not go for any such uh, funerals. Because Allah has given a clear reason that they denied in Allah and His Rasul and died while they were transgressors. So then Aaf Sallallahu did not go. Let neither their wealth nor their children dazzle you. Through these, through these, Allah wants to punish them in this world and let their souls depart while they are still disbelievers. Wa iza unzilat suratun an aminu billahi wa jahidu ma'a rasulihi is ta'zanaka ulu tawli minhum. Saying, whenever a surah is revealed, saying, believe in Allah and make jihad along with his rasul, Capable people among them ask you for exemption. Those who are able to go, even they come and ask for exemption. What, what do they say? Please leave us with those who are to stay at home. Varna nakun ma'al qa'ideen. They prefer to be those who remain behind. As a result, a seal was set upon their hearts so that they do not understand. So, one does not believe, I think, or one does not remember that sometimes some of our sins can be so well taken into account for that the hearts can be put a seal upon. And then one may not have the tawfiq of even understanding the simplest of the versions of Islam and Quran and Allah and His Rasul. And one thinks that it's not my fault if I can't understand. But little do they realize that maybe it was because of the sins that Allah has put a seal on the hearts. And may Allah save everybody from that. They prefer to be with those who remain behind. As a result, a seal was set upon their hearts so that they do not understand. Allah 
wa ulaika humul muflihun make jihad with their wealth and their persons but the rasul and those who believe with him make jihad with their wealth and their persons they are the ones who will have all the goodness and they are the ones who will be successful allah has prepared for them gardens beneath which rivers flow to live therein forever zalik al fawzul azim that is the greatest achievement وَجَاءَ الْمُؤَذِّرُونَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ لِيُؤْذَنَ لَهُمْ وَقَعَدَ الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Some from among the desert Arabs also came with their excuses, begging exemption to stay behind. Thus those who lied to Allah and His Rasul sat inactive. Soon a painful punishment shall seize those of them who disbelieved. There is no blame on the disabled, the sick and those lacking the means. to stay behind as long as they are sincere to Allah as in Rasul. Now they wanted to go but either because of sickness or they didn't have the transport, the means because you needed horses or camels because if you're going on an expedition then you may be not be able to walk so much. So if they don't have the means or if they have other valid reasons for as long as they are otherwise sincere to Allah as in Rasul, Allah said these excuses can be acceptable. Allah says there is no blame against such people. Allah is forgiving, merciful. وَلَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ إِذَا مَا آتَوْكَ لِتَحْمِلَهُمْ قُلْتَ لَا أَجِدُ مَا أَحْمِلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ Likewise, there is no blame on those who came to you and requested the conveyance to the battlefront and you said, I am unable to provide you the conveyance because some of the Sahabas were made to return home because Nabi Sassam said, I don't have any transport to give you. All the camels are, are uh, with, with the, I mean, they are all booked. I mean, and, and he didn't have any spare uh, means of uh, conveyance that he could have offered. So, some of the Sahabas were told to go back. And they returned with their eyes streaming with tears and they wished that they could join. They were filled with sorrow that they had no resources of going forth to the battlefield at their own expense. So they came and they asked Nabi Sallallahu if he could provide them. And in a hadith it is said, some people have remained behind in al Madina, and you never crossed a valley or marched forth but they were in with you. They said, while they are still in Madina? After some said yes, as they have been held back by a legal excuse, and this comes in Muslim. In the Masabilu ala lazina yas ta zinu naka vahum agniya. The way that is blame is only against those who begged exemption, although they are rich. Radu bi anya kunu maal khawalif. They preferred to be with those who remain behind. Wa taba Allahu ala qulubihim fahum la yalamun. Allah has set a seal upon their hearts, so they do not know what they have missed. Wa akhir udawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu alla ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu laik. Inshallah, we are going to join. with the 11th juz next time assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh